Bismillah, elhamdülillah, ve salatu ve salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. So, we're going to continue with the section 2 on this particular video of the hadith, the Hibs in Leadership Workbook. Um, section 2, hadith pertaining to good manners and faith in Allah. And this is transliteration, it's not the Arabic. But the transliteration. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحب أن يزحزح عن النار ويدخله الجنة فلتركه منياته وهو يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر ويتي إلينا من أو من يحب أن يأتي إليه. In the meaning of this hadith, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "Whoever should love to be delivered from hellfire and entered into paradise, let him meet his end with the faith in Allah and the last day." And let him treat people the way he or she wants to be treated. Or <coughs> as Prophet wasallam said, the teacher's comments. In this hadith, the Prophet wasallam is reminding us that whoever believes in Allah and the last day must be mindful of Allah and the last day, which is the day of judgment at all times. Because it is what will give us the happy ending on this earth as none know when he or she appointed time is of death. And in order to be on the safe side, be mindful of the Creator and that would, or that which will help a person from, that will keep the person away from going uh, into the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment and enter them instead into the Jannah. Again, as we think of leaders, others who are in the role of memorizing the Quran, it does not have the element of being conscious. So one who is going to be conscious is definitely of the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment is most certainly going to be more into doing that in which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of again the taqwa that they have provisioned up <clears throat> therefore being the best at memorizing al-Quran doing things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and this is from Sahih Muslim. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna min akmali al-mu'minina imanu ahsanuhum khulqan waltifahuhum bil-ahlihi The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Verily the most complete of believers in faith are those who have the best characters and who are the most kind to their families. Or as Prophet والسلام, said, and if we look at many ahadith, we will realize that he's talking to, he's not just talk. well, he's talking to the men mainly. However, uh, that is because men surrounded him in the most type of, uh, situations where he was actually in the prophethood uh, season or the prophethood section at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for only 23 years. Now how many uncles today are living in their 50s and 60s and 70s been Muslim all their lives? So, to take the Qur'an dearly is 
Saying it is one thing, but acting it is doing something completely different. A teacher's comments on that. This hadith by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is tying the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the noble character together. If one is truly a believer in Allah, they will have a noble character because if a person is mindful and submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will behave well accordingly in a noble manner. When a person is conscious of the day of judgment, when they will meet, this is the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the fact that he knows all that we have done. Their belief shows in how they behave and what they say at home and outside the home as well. This particular hadith also touches on the fact that being best at home towards one's family is part of having good faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being one of good character in terms of practicing strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, patience in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This could be found in Tirmidhi 26.12. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukum man fil sama. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The merc, the merciful, meaning Allah subhanahu wa taala, will be shown well mercy." So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam, the merciful, those who are merciful, ar-Rahimun, yarhamuhum. Rahimun, they will be, they will be shown mercy. Ar-Rahman, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. Be, most, be merciful to those on earth and the one who is in, who is beyond the heaven will have mercy on you or as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Teacher's comments. As far as being merciful, it is a quality which the Prophet ﷺ himself exemplified very much so. He is also making the connection between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, if a person has intention to be merciful towards their followers, students, family members, and neighbors, Allah will show mercy to them as well. So the Prophet ﷺ says for us to have mercy upon all that in on this earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is in the highest heaven and beyond Allah will have mercy upon us or as Prophet ﷺ uh, mentioned specifically at this time we are in when the person fills their heart with mercy this increases humility and raises their statue or their status in the eyes of Allah. It also makes goodness find its way into the person's heart and mind while increasing others' mercy upon him or her as well. When Allah subhanahu because of the fact that uh, when a person is doing for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah opened up all type of opportunities, all type of doors, all type of uh, means which no one ever thought of before. We must remember to have mercy, well, none of us human beings. We must remember to have mercy on those whom we lead or we come in contact with and we're dealing with them. Even if it's from a kind gesture, how is the health, how is the family? One thing about uh, many whom we greet today from West Africa, they will tell you that you don't just pass by a neighbor and say hi and keep moving. And something is wrong, if that's the case. Your neighbor is going to follow you and say, what's wrong with you? Did somebody... Uh, pass away or something. What they normally do, what we normally all do, we stand 
and we greet each other for a good five, ten minutes. Good five, ten minutes, you know, asking about the health, asking about the work, asking about the, the, the parents, you have to ask about the, the, the siblings, you know. Uh, you have to ask how far they've gotten in, in school to now where they're working, and you have to joke a little bit about that. You have to giggle a little bit. They do. So all of that uh, is there. When, the first, when, when a person fills their heart with mercy, this increases again humility and raises the status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the fact that he encourages us, he encourages us to be humble. It also makes goodness find its way into the person's heart and mind while increasing others' mercy upon him or her. Of course, we're talking the mercy of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to be a means of aid or assistance. You must also remember to have mercy on those whom uh, we come in contact with regardless of who they are because they still are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Quran upon us as a means of mercy itself and we are responsible for conveying and acting uh, upon that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. That's why the Hibza candidate must try to increase their mercy towards everyone. Best we can inform or best we can aid and we can assist one who wants to become a Hafiz to have a lot of compassion. Even those who are not merciful towards him or her. It's easy to have mercy towards someone who is having mercy towards you, but even when someone or some people they are not merciful towards you at all, still be merciful to them. That is a different story altogether. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The section goes on to say, uh, true leaders of the believers, they definitely, or the true leaders of the believers, such as Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, uh, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, the Ashram Bashirin Abil Jannah, they had a lot of mercy, and they were very kind and respectful to all people. And if we look into their history, in the case of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he was testing a, a potential governor, one, candidate, one who was a candidate for being governor. And they walked around and they met, and they came across some youngsters. And Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, he grabbed the child, or he grabbed uh, gently and kissed the child on the forehead and that governor questioned and said are you uh, showing this much mercy to this little kid like this little kid is insignificant basically why are you giving this kid so much showing them so much love and this is where Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab quoted him you know the, the, uh, the saying of the Prophet والسلام, and he said you cannot have mercy on the people. Why would I appoint you a governor? So be mindful of that. And if we look in uh, at Tirmidhi 1924, we will see that. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inni lam ubhath la'anna an wa innama bu'ithu rahmatan. The Prophet ﷺ said, I was not sent to invoke curse, but rather I was sent as a mercy, or as the Prophet ﷺ himself said it. The teacher's comments, another very important point as it relates to good manners, is to avoid picking on others, bullying others, whether it's through cursing or insulting trying to say good things to other people and not to be one to point out the negative deeds, mistakes, and faults in other people. 
Because the one who is merciful by hiding the faults of others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hide their faults on the day of judgment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, a well-mannered person who is leading others by good example in revising the Qur'an, which is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not give the best example by getting angry or bullying or insulting or mocking others. This is not good character. We do not find this uh, in the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find patience, we find humility, we find uh, compassion, love, and so on. So this can be found in Muslim 2599. Qala Rasulullah <laughs> Al-Fahshai wala ba'athi. So the Prophet ﷺ said the believer does not insult others and does not curse others. The believer is not vulgar and is not someone who has no shame because there's also the one who does not have shame. There is a hadith that talks about the one who does not have shame. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, believers, they have modesty. Al-haya'u min al-iman. So we have to remember always to look further than just something in which we think is correct, that we actually have to find it in what the example of the Qur'an, and who was the example of the Qur'an that was none other than Sayyidina al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The teacher's comment, in this hadith, the way of a believer is connected to how they treat others. One who acts on the basis of belief will know that the Prophet ﷺ says not to make fun of another and not to insult another person because in the eyes of Allah, that individual could be better than you. The believer does not speak in an ill-mannered or immodest manner and chooses their words very carefully. Similarly, those who are true leaders will have the same way in communicating with their constituents. Constituents, the Prophet ﷺ had the best of character and everyone he spoke with felt his kindness and respect towards them. He ﷺ also mentioned that the believer has modesty. This means that the one who believes in Allah has conscious of those angels who have been sent to watch over them and record their deeds, they are mindful. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of practicing the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he would do it had he been here with us today. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu. Salamun ala al